Hey there, YouTube. Got another video coaching review for you guys to check out. This one is from Tate, uh, who is also a patron of mine, a patron supporter. He's submitting a video coaching review for me to reference. It's only with him with a stretch band. Uh, he's working on a lot of forum stuff, and he feels like he's at a good place and wants to get some feedback before he uh, really ingrains what he's working on. So I'm dealing with a few different things on my end. I'm 3D printing something right now, so excuse the uh, ambient noise in the room. It's not the ideal thing in the world. You know, it is what it is, gotta multitask and get things done. Also, uh, I'm very fast and abbreviated in this video. Um, I really give them as much as I possibly can see in a very short period of time because I have an issue with my computer that I'm working on. The internal fan is not running, so when it gets a little bit too warm in there, it tends to slow things down and uh, mess up the frame rate. So uh, excuse the uh, excited uh, hurriedness of this video, but uh, I did my best to give Tate some good feedback with what he sent me, and I think it'll send him on the right path. So uh, if you're interested in video coaching reviews, check out links in the description below from my website, jkaminski.com. I'll put a card at the top up there too as well for you to check out uh, what it entails. But essentially, you send me a video. I review it just like I did here with Tate's. Give uh, about a 20-minute response video, give or take. And uh, I can cover anything from form to equipment, tuning, mental help. And uh, you know, I just do as much as I can to help out the archery community uh, around the world. I've had a lot of people from all over the place submitting these to get some help and uh, it's been excellent. So anyway, enjoy. You're watching the Jake Minsky YouTube channel. Tate. Hey there, Tate. Thanks for submitting another video coaching review. Uh, appreciate the different angles you got me here and I appreciate your dedication as well. So we'll get right into it and give you some help here. Uh, there's a few things that I see already. Uh, one of the main things is the head position. You'll see as you go to draw back, you elevate the head up and then you kind of settle down into the shot. So if you watch, see the, how, how the head's elevated, that chin is up and kind of protruded forward that way. And then you see how the head just came down. So see that movement there? Use the air register in the background as a reference. Pretty easy to see when you do that. If you use the, the register back here, see how the head's elevated? The chin's up above this, even higher. And then you settle down, now the chin's right in line with it. So there's that. Uh, that'll really help. The end head position is excellent, but you gotta keep it there the entire time. Um, also, I've noticed, uh, just a side note, you probably don't have a mirror in your bedroom. I'm assuming this is your bedroom or living room. Maybe your living room. I don't know. But uh, you don't have a mirror here. And you're constantly, I can see your eyes looking at the camera. So you're, you're doing this type of thing, which is good if you have something to look at. Uh, but I can tell later on, I'm going to show you some stuff where you're actually distracted by yourself and you're affecting your shot. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that. So if you can do it in the bathroom or something in front of the mirror, that'd be a lot more beneficial for you. So you see that right there, actually. See how you're looking as if there's a target? And right before the shot breaks, you'll see your eyes look over here, but then your head will actually start to turn this way. And I, I want you to avoid excess movements that aren't normal in shooting, because when you actually be able to get back to shooting, I don't want you to have to erase bad habits. So watch your head now as I play forward in time. See your eyes turn towards me, the camera, and then that head started to turn ever so slightly. The reason I can tell is you can see the nose is sticking out further fast past the face here. But then as we go forward in time, see how now I can't see your nose past the face and I can see the face and see this eye more. And then you finally let go. Okay. So there's uh, that to work on, uh, making sure you're not distracting yourself, uh, the head position. Overall, at full draw, you look to be in decent uh a, a decent spot, but the elbow is a little bit elevated. A really good <clears throat> way to tell where the el elbow would be in an ideal position is if you were to take the exact tip of your elbow right here and go to the knock of the arrow, which would be in between your index and middle finger, and continue that line straight. You'll see that it's down here right near this picture. It isn't up. Well, actually, you can't see that. You'll see that it's down here, this tip of the elbow, line to here, it continues down in this area. Ideally would be the tip of the elbow through the knock of the arrow should intersect with the grip on the bow. Uh, so 
too high of an elbow, that line goes down and it's below the grip. Too low of an elbow and that line goes above the grip. You want that elbow in line with the knock, in line with the grip. That would be the most ideal position. Because um, it starts with a slightly high elbow. As you draw back, you're, you're low, which is excellent. But then see how you kind of switch to that elbow swinging upwards like that? and then it continues to lead up with anchoring with the tip of the elbow rather than anchoring with the hand. At least that's what I see. Uh, I review the uh, couple of the videos I've done in the recurve form series specifically about anchor. I talk about anchor with the hand, don't anchor with the elbow uh, for this reason alone, for the high elbow. Uh, let's see. Some of these towards the end, um, you'll notice the hand, the bow hand, will start to move before you break the shot. So watch as you go to release, watch that bow hand, and you'll see how it already is starting to snap downwards before you release the string. Right now, what you would be doing if you were to be shooting a bow would be to have that pressure low in the grip, which is ideal. But then right before you break the shot, obviously you don't have a clicker, so it's hard to simulate but you want to keep that arm there in that low pressure point and let the stretch band pull your hand out and then down to do that sitting motion. See how you even had that tendency to just to go like that right there. I saw it move and then we'll go frame by frame. So here you're at full draw. Watch this hand and you can use the clock as a reference and the TV as a reference or whatever that is. And you'll see that as we go forward, See how it's lowering? And then see the hand now? See how I'm going forward. See how it's flat? Like this. And then forward, forward, forward. And then the shot breaks. And then you can see that bow arm. Watch the arm, again, relative to the clock. Drop, drop, dramatically drop. So ideally would be bow arm to be still using like uh, this back here in the reference. And as the shot breaks, then the bow will jump, the stretch band will jump, pulls it forward, and you want to keep that arm like that. You don't want to go like this. Yes, the bow will be a little heavier and it will want to pull your arm down, but without a stretch band, that arm should be right there, staying in place. You want to try to control it down like that. That would be more ideal. You can practice that on your own. Watch yourself. You can even hold your arm and go, okay, am I doing this or am I doing this? A lot of people go like this and go up with the wrist and down with the hand. You're not doing that. You're, you're already starting to anticipate coming down. You're adding that pressure and then you're doing that. Uh, so that'll definitely disturb the arrow as the shot's breaking. And it's not just there. It's also in the whole head. It's in the whole body. It's forced. You're, you're really forcing it instead of letting it happen. Maintain that tension and direction, and then cut the stretch band, but keep the tension and direction going. And you'll notice my head, my body position, nothing moves, nothing changes. But if you watch yourself, you'll see the head goes like this, because you're, you're pushing a lot of like forward head pressure into it. It could be because of that head moving earlier in the shot. So if you first fix the head moving earlier in the shot, and then work on this, I bet you the head will help. It'll be really close to ideal and it won't have that motion going on. So if I show you uh, frame by frame again, again, you can use the register here in the background. Forward, 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 forward. Let's watch that head, see how it pops forward and down. Not ideal. Uh, try to keep that head position. Like I said, the head position, maintaining it will be critical to your success. It'll help a lot. Uh, another thing that you can see, again, all related to this forced release, is watch the elbow and the shoulders dramatically start to swing around and you haven't let go yet. So it should be the hands letting go and then this hand and the arm and the elbow and the scapula. Just swing around naturally. Don't force it. Just let it to happen. It's like holding on to something and then all of a sudden there's no tension. It's not holding on to something and then all of a sudden adding tension to break it, if that makes sense. So watch that arm and shoulder also move just in conjunction with this and the 
or the thing moving down here, this is starting to move around a lot and down. See how that whole, this whole side down here is also dropping before you break the shot. Now, let's see if I can find how you look from this angle. Yeah, so that low draw, you're not getting into your back at all with your actual draw. You're loading a lot with the shoulder and the bicep. Uh, stretch band is difficult to master. I, I won't give you a pass, uh, or I, you know, I won't fail to admit that. You, you gotta be able to learn the motor control and try to, as you go to draw the bow, you'll see how my elbow comes up, and then as I draw, it's continually coming around. So from an angle similar to yours, as I go to draw, see how that elbow and the arm is always swinging in. Right now what you've got is like this. You've got, and this is a bit of an exaggeration, but you've got like this going on. So if you watch, watch the whole, see how that shoulder moves? And it's, it's every shot. See how it's like, it's like, like, like this, instead of like this more around, like you're elbowing. Um, the arm movement after the shot, that whole this coming down type of thing, um, the head moving forward, all that, is just from this excessive, um, slightly over-exaggerated movements you got going on. Maintain the position of the body and the head and just lift and then the arms rotate around the body. Don't, don't move things to, to over, overdo it. And that one, you could really see the hand move. See that? Forward, 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 grab, bend down, then the shot breaks. I, I don't know if you can see that, but that's that's definitely what's going on. So watch. So see how you're, you're looking at me right now. You're looking at the camera, watching yourself. That's good. I like that. But um, try to focus on the feeling a lot. You gotta get the feeling down of drawing in a manner that's not, see how your hand's coming down to the chest before you start to come around, that's loading up the bicep right here. It should be coming around a lot more. Drive with a rotation of the torso more so than the hand movement. Less of the hand, more of the shoulder. That shoulder should be moving around and behind you, less than that hand coming down. And then now you can see the shoulder starting to move around but that shoulder should start moving around as you're getting back into this position. As you're starting to draw here, that shoulder should move instead of lift, do this, and then that, if that makes sense. It should be lift and rotate immediately, not lift to do. I'm not sure um, where that's coming from. I'm just trying to do this abbreviated before my computer slows down. I'm having issues doing video coaching reviews, so forgive the brevity of this, um, but you can definitely see what I mean by that movement. The overall position is not too bad. Uh, the wrist is a little bent like this, as opposed to like this. All of that is related to the way you draw. If you were to draw less like this with that wrist bent like this to then have to do this and bent, draw more like that, you won't have this wrist bent out like that while you're at full draw. And so when you go to break the shot, actually, you'll see that wrist is very unstable in that position. And watch as I go forward in time, watch the wrist and forearm. See how the, you're bending the wrist backwards more? See how that bend right there? You can watch that pinky move out. Your draw length, if you were shooting an actual bow right now, would probably be about three quarters of an inch too short. Uh, so bringing that from being from here to here, that's over exaggerated, but from here to here is about three quarters of an inch in my experience. I would work on bringing that anchor further under. You're still very far outside here and it's not a solid anchor. I can tell because that pinky is nowhere near your neck, but your hand is relatively vertical. Part of that problem is going to be driven by the actual alignment. So if I'm out of alignment and I'm still anchored, but I'm a little bit outside, you'll see how there's a huge gap here from my pinky. But if I'm uh, in better alignment, now it's I can actually touch my neck with my pinky, 
let alone getting that hand under the jaw. So it should literally be like this, where the top of this knuckle, if I were to take a marker and I were to mark the top of the knuckle, and you may want to do this yourself, that blue dot that is on the top of the knuckle, you'll see the hand in this relaxed position, that dot is right there, basically. And that is what I anchor with. That's what I'm pushing on to the bottom of my jaw bone, not on the outside of my jaw bone with this dot. Right now it looks like this dot, compared to that dot, is touching the jaw on the side of your face as opposed to the top dot being under your jaw. Um, that, that anchor being underneath the jawbone is going to be very critical to consistent success, consistent scores, consistent grouping. Uh, once you get the alignment a little bit better and that wrist in a better position without the head moving and all that, your release will be much better. Uh, here you've got it a little shorter. It just kind of pops back. You don't have this long elbowing behind you. See how it just pops and then you stop with the hand kind of curled like this? Elbow behind you. Let it go all the way until you can't move anymore. Don't jam those muscles up in the shoulder and the bicep and all that stuff to stop this movement. It should be fluid and kind of just let it phew, let it be sloppy for lack of better terms. Just let it happen. Don't be so hyper controlled over that part of the shot. The release part should be the most freeing shot, freeing part of the shot. It should be just the shot is over, I've done my work, I let it happen, not a control everything. Control through here is important, control here, control through expansion, very, very slow uh, and controlled and deliberate. Expand, 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 but then phew, sloppy and free. Let it just happen. I'm not saying open the hand, of course, excuse me. It's just maintain the tension, maintain the direction, let it happen, and just let it, let that elbow come around, let that hand move around, and don't be so rigid with it. So uh, that was a super abbreviated, super crash course in what I see. Uh, I would start with that kind of stuff. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'd be happy to help. Uh, like I said, um, having a little bit of issues. Actually, my, my um, uh, fan in my computer isn't working right now, so I got one on order to replace that. Uh, I probably screwed something up putting RAM in. Anyway, um, I hope uh, this helps. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And again, uh, thanks for submitting a video coaching review. Much appreciated.